Charon is the largest moon of Pluto and also currently the largest known moon of a dwarf planet. So let's first quickly take a look at this moon before delving into more unknown moons. Pluto's diameter is by around two times greater than that of Charon, so Charon has a diameter of 1,200 kilometers. It is so large for a moon that both Pluto and Charon are orbiting a point outside of themselves. Charon is a lot darker than Pluto, and it has a massive brown spot near the North Pole called Mordor. Possibly it formed when gases containing organic matter escaped from Pluto and reached Charon, where they froze and turned brown due to light. Charon also has two distinct sides, the northern one, which is rugged, and the southern one, which is rather smooth in comparison. And what separates the two sides is a massive ridge that is at least 1,000 kilometers long and at times is several kilometers above the smoother region. The two distinct sides, the massive ridge, and in general, the many cracks on Charon's surface are all likely a result of a water ocean freezing below the surface. When water freezes, it expands, causing the surface to crack and produce all sorts of interesting features. Likely, the water ocean freezing on Charon happened during at least two different times in different regions. Charon is only 19,000 kilometers away from Pluto. For some perspective, the Moon is 385,000 kilometers away from Earth. Now, besides the relatively well-known Charon, there are four other moons of Pluto that are pretty unknown. They are also all smaller and more distant from Pluto compared to Charon. So Charon is, as mentioned, about 19,000 kilometers away from Pluto. But the second closest moon to Pluto, called Styx, is about 42,000 kilometers away from Pluto. Styx is, at its longest, only 16 kilometers long, and it wasn't photographed with much detail. The third closest moon to Pluto is called Nix. It is orbiting Pluto at a distance of about 48,000 kilometers. At its longest, it is about 50 kilometers long. Its surface is very reflective due to water ice. The exception in terms of reflectivity is its red spot. The exact way it got the red spot is still uncertain. The red coloration suggests that it is organic material. Next, at a distance of 58,000 kilometers from Pluto, is a moon called Kerberos. It is about 19 kilometers long at its longest. It also wasn't imaged in great detail, but there is still enough detail for us to know that it is composed of two distinct bodies that are connected. It has the same shape that Arakoth has. These objects form when two bodies gravitate towards each other and then touch. The most distant moon of Pluto is called Hydra, at a distance of about 65,000 kilometers away from Pluto. It is about 50 kilometers long at its longest. Its surface is highly reflective due to water ice. Hydra was photographed with quite a bit of detail enough that some of its craters were revealed. Besides the four small moons of Pluto, there are many other much larger moons of dwarf planets that are rarely talked about, and for a good reason. We don't have any high quality images of their surfaces. Also, we likely won't be getting those high quality images for at least many decades unless there is some very significant innovation. The New Horizons probe that imaged Pluto and Charon needed nearly 10 years to reach Pluto and in total costed about $700 million. Besides Ceres, which is located between Mars and Jupiter, every single other dwarf planet was found at a distance around or a lot beyond Neptune, meaning that visiting pretty much all of the biggest dwarf planets with moons would 
take approximately as long or much longer to reach as Pluto with the New Horizons technology. Despite not having up close images, through analyzing the light waves coming off of the moons of dwarf planets, we still know a lot about them. So, out of top 10 largest dwarf planets in the solar system, besides Ceres, eight of them have at least one known moon. All of these 10 largest dwarf planets are also at around 900 kilometers in diameter or bigger. So, Charon and other moons of Pluto were already examined. But are there any other spherical moons of dwarf planets? Quite possibly, yes. Eris, the most massive known dwarf planet, has a moon called Dysnomia. It was discovered in 2005, the same year that Eris was discovered. Through measuring certain wavelengths, the estimate of its diameter is placed between 600 and 800 kilometers, making this moon alone larger than quite a few dwarf planets. Its size and density is great enough such that it is very likely spherical. Usually objects at around 500 kilometers in diameter that were imaged up close are spherical. For example, Mimas, Enceladus, and Miranda. However, there is still of course Vesta, which is not spherical and around that size. Still, since Dysnomia is significantly larger than 4 Vesta, it's very likely spherical. The estimate of Dysnomia's density is placed between 1.8 and 2.4 grams per centimeters cubic, indicating that it likely has a lot of water ice. However, its surface is extremely dark, and the analysis of light bouncing off of its surface shows that it is a lot more red and a lot darker compared to Eris. Dysnomia orbits Eris at a distance of 37,000 kilometers, so it is about 10 times closer to Eris compared to the distance of the Moon to Earth. Now the Moon goes around the Earth at a speed of 1 kilometer a second, which is 6 times faster compared to the orbital speed of Dysnomia around Eris. However, because of the difference in distances that need to be traveled, Dysnomia completes a full orbit around Eris in 15 days, while the Moon needs around 27 days. Because Dysnomia is so close to Eris, from the surface of Dysnomia, Eris would appear about 7 times larger in the sky compared to how the Moon appears from Earth. So from one side of Dysnomia, Eris would completely dominate the view of the sky. The surface features of Eris would be visible in a very sharp way. We already know that the surface of Eris is white and mostly uniform, and spectroscopy of Eris by the James Webb Telescope showed that Eris very clearly has nitrogen and methane ice on its surface like Pluto. The distance of Dysnomia and Eris from the Sun is between 38 and 97 times greater than the distance of the Earth to the Sun. At its most distant point from the Sun, at 97 AU, the temperature on the surface of Eris can at its lowest reach around minus 243 degrees Celsius that is 30 degrees Celsius away from the absolute zero. Dysnomia should have a similar temperature, but possibly just slightly higher because its dark surface can absorb more heat. The distance of 97 AU of Eris at its most distant point from the Sun is nearly two times greater than the distance of Pluto at its own most distant point from the Sun. Eris and Dysnomia need 559 years to complete a full orbit around the Sun, two times longer than Pluto. Although the brightness level of Eris doesn't vary a whole lot throughout the surface, through extremely precise measurements of slight differences in brightness levels, the rotation of Eris was tracked, and what was revealed was a pattern that clearly shows Eris 
being tidally locked to Dysnomia. Also Dysnomia is tidally locked to Eris, meaning that only one side of Eris is facing Dysnomia, and only one side of Dysnomia is facing Eris. So only a single side of Eris would be revealed to you from the surface of Dysnomia. Eris would appear completely fixed in the sky. Next let's look at Vanth. It is the third largest known moon of a dwarf planet. Its diameter is around 440 kilometers, which is about half the diameter of Orcus, the dwarf planet it is orbiting. Its diameter is right in the range where it likely has a mass where it is quite possibly spherical, but not certainly. Light waves coming off of Vanth suggest that it is red and quite dark, which is very different from Orcus, which is not as colored and is more reflective. Vanth is orbiting Orcus at a distance of only 9000 kilometers. That is very close. And that also means that from the surface of Vanth, Orcus appears about 11 times larger in the sky compared to the moon from Earth. Incredible level of detail on Orcus would be visible from Vanth. Density of Orcus is 1.5 grams per centimeter cubic, suggesting that it has lots of water in its composition. And light waves suggest that its surface is very rich in water and methane ice. So far, top three largest known satellites of dwarf planets were covered. But beyond those three largest, every other satellite has a diameter and mass which suggests that they are not spherical. The fourth largest moon of a dwarf planet is Imari, at about 350 kilometers in diameter. It is orbiting a dwarf planet called Varda, which has a diameter of 740 kilometers. What is somewhat odd is that the distance at which Imari orbits Varda is only 4,800 kilometers. So Varda would appear about 18 times larger in the sky from Imari compared to how the moon appears from Earth. The fifth largest known moon of a dwarf planet is called Hiiaka. It is about 320 kilometers in diameter and it orbits Haumea, a planet that is shaped like a bean. Haumea at its longest is about 2000 kilometers long. Haumea also completes a full rotation around itself in only four hours. So an entire day on Haumea lasts only four hours. Such an incredible speed of rotation is also the reason behind why it is in the shape of a bean. Hiiaka is one of the two moons that Haumea has. The other one is called Namaka. It has a diameter of about 170 kilometers that is almost half the diameter of Hiiaka. Namaka is orbiting Haumea at a distance of about 25,000 kilometers, while Hiiaka is orbiting Haumea at a distance of about 50,000 kilometers. The orbits of Hiiaka and Namaka are quite inclined, meaning that they are not going around the equator of Haumea. That is quite different when compared to the moons of Pluto, which are all very neatly orbiting almost exactly around the equator of Pluto. Hiiaka and Namaka both have spectrums which indicate that their surfaces are composed of water ice. Haumea also has a surface dominated by water ice. Considering the similarities, Hiiaka and Namaka are possibly not captured satellites. Rather, they might have formed as a result of an ancient impact that sent chunks of Haumea flying into space, and those pieces then settled into their orbits around Haumea and became Hiiaka and Namaka. So all top five of the largest moons of dwarf planets were covered. Other moons of large dwarf planets are, for example, Mk2, a moon of Makimaki. Although Makimaki is the second brightest object beyond Neptune in the solar system, Mk2 has the reflectivity of charcoal. 
Shanglu is a moon of Gong Gong. Its orbit is unusually elongated, and unlike Gong Gong, it is far less red. Waiwat is a moon of Kwawar. The moon is extremely dim. Its close distance to Kwawar of about 13,000 kilometers should give a nice view of Kwawar's rings. Sedna currently has no known moons. Vanth, moon of Orcus, was already covered. Actia is a moon of Cilicia. It is probably the sixth largest moon of a dwarf planet at nearly 300 kilometers in diameter. And it orbits Cilicia extremely closely at a distance of only 5,700 kilometers. Its extremely dim surface with a very low amount of water ice would be visible in great detail from Actia. 2002 MS4 currently does not have any known moons. So the largest and in general the most significant known moons of dwarf planets were covered in this video. Considering that the New Horizons mission costed around $700 million for operating for about 10 years, and considering the similarity in distances between Pluto and other dwarf planets with moons, then that means that for about 10 to 20 billion dollars, all of the mentioned moons in this video could be visited with the New Horizons technology. Sadly, as of yet, there are no serious flyby missions planned for these moons, so they are going to remain largely unknown for likely at least many decades.